get started. Welcome to the first uh, recap webinar of the Urban Tower Scalping Strategy. This uh, strategy was actually released by me in 2009 and since then it's been on every major uh, Forex forum and publishing on the internet and with five stars across the board on every single forum. Now many of you guys are fans of the strategy some of you guys are actually just members of my social network which is uh, at uh, urbanforex.ning.com and uh, some of you are just new to this probably saw an advertisement and just walked in so um, let's get started on the strategy let me first go over the strategy uh, there are several pairs I look at and let me load up the charts for those of you who do not have this rainbow indicator that I'm putting up right now, you guys can get it on the forums page on urbanforex.ning.com. Under the forums, when you come up to the strategy, it is towards the bottom of the page. Um, below the video, you will see the zip file, which is the indicator. If you do not know how to use the indicator, please let us know in the chat room. Uh, somebody is more than happy to help you um, get that installed. Okay, so uh, let's load up our charts here. We're going to go through what happened uh, the entire last week. Before we do that, we're going to go through the strategy completely in case some of you guys have been trading this wrong or got the wrong impression of, the, uh, of how this works. Okay, um, let's take a look. We have uh, more members coming in right now still as we speak. Let's see... Sorry, there we go. And let's put this on gold too. Let's take a look at gold. I've never looked at gold, so let's take a look at gold with this as well. Okay, now this strategy, I, I personally really, really dislike indicators, as you guys have probably known from all of my previous uh, uh, webinars. But the way I've created this strategy is we were combining price action with a moving average okay now what we're doing is I've put together several moving averages and with these moving averages we're looking for a price action to happen around these lines now what this means is let me let me show you an example okay let's go down to the 15 minute chart let's take a look at uh, let's let me see if I can get you a clear example now it is recommended to use the 15 minute chart um, if you guys are scalpers otherwise the one hour chart is obviously ideal for this strategy now what the strategy basically does is we look for a trend now once you see these MAs expand you see how it's contracted here it's all together and uh, really tight and you can see over here it is getting wider and wider Okay, um, let me get the questions open in case there are questions. I can see them. Okay. All right. So, once they get a little bit wider, you know that there is a trend in place. And the trend is going with the moving average. What we want is a retracement from the market, which is something like this that we see. The market goes back up. And it goes and it touches our MAs. Now, it can touch anywhere, any line. It doesn't really matter. As long as the chart does not close, I mean, the candle does not close on the outside. Okay? And what we're looking for is three consecutive highs. Okay? Now, on an, on a when you have a downtrend, we want the market to retrace upwards. You want to have a higher low, which is right here, another higher low another higher low and we have another higher low we need at least three okay once you have three you take the highest low after the touch and you want the break of that break of that line is when you enter so if we take this one by one you know we've had a higher low higher low higher low and we've actually even had a touch so on our next candle we've had a break right here that's when we enter our short stops at the tip of our exhaust our uh, our candle that touched the uh, uh, the moving average 
that's where your stops would be and you would be taking it short from here okay you can use one is to one ratio you guys can use any exit strategies that you guys like um, a lot, a lot, I have an intern who blogs this every single day uh, he's been doing it for the past six months and uh, uh, his blog is also available on our social network it's also available on WordPress and uh, he does a one is to one ratio and he trades with several different pairs and he averages anywhere between uh, 50 to 100 pips in a day um, some days good some days bad obviously okay uh, I see there is a hand raise uh, any any questions let's go go over the questions if there is any so far um, Karen hi Naveen first time on the live webinar thank you you're welcome Karen welcome to the room um, the properties of the MAs okay I do not have the properties of the MA as I pulled it out of another system and I looked at this uh, indicator and it looked really nice you can get the indicator on our website uh, which is urbanforex.ning.com here it is on top and uh, you can just go on to the forums and once you find the strategy or you can search for it on the site and uh, right below the strategy below the video is where you will see uh, the indicator file um, Bede, you said you cannot see my cursor. I don't know if you can. Uh, can't see your screen correctly. Okay, it looks like my my cursor has stopped moving. So let me refresh my uh, my screen once again, real quick. Okay, let's get rid of all these questions. Okay, but. Uh, Steve says lagging really bad wondering if it's just me um, just want to confirm with all you guys can you guys hear hear my voice at least clearly or is it just uh, uh, my screen that's having little problems okay I'm gonna reload the screen just now just a moment please okay let me know when my screen does come up and once you see my mouse moving again is up now for Karen uh, my name pronounced bead like around around the neck okay bead okay great great sorry about that so we will keep that in mind bead theory it's working now screens up mouse is good moving moving uh, yes the rodent is moving now okay <laughs> all right here we go so let's let's continue now now we see that the market we want to have uh, three consecutive highs once it reaches our uh, our moving averages once the touch happens you want to create a line just below the candle that th did the touch and then you see do we have at least three consecutive towers this is how we got the towers we have one tower we have two we have three and four you can see how it's slowly moving up if you take the trend line and you put it from the bottom and you connect the lows you can see it's heading upwards okay once this happens and it bounces from the MA we enter short at the cross of the lowest at this line right here the break of the low of uh, the candle that touched the moving average we enter low and you can start with one is to one ratio or any other exit uh, strategies that you like now we let's continue down let's look for another example and uh, I'm gonna start explaining different techniques different methods I'm gonna explain how to use your stop losses we're gonna explain how to maximize your profit because many of you guys who are trading this that you're getting five pips ten pips out of this which is fine but it's not worth it to get into it for five pips ten pips if we're talking about 50 pips 100 pips then we're talking business so I'm gonna teach you guys how to do that with the same exact thing that you're seeing on your screen just how to multiply your pips not your lot size multiplying your lot size is the wrong thing to do okay so now um, bead uh, you're asking what is a tower it is basically a candle candlestick that is approaching the MA we call that the towers consider this the MA as the sky okay um, on this particular one uh, the market is in a uptrend you can see that the, the MAs are quite uh, open they're they're not too congested they're quite open the market touches the MA on this particular candle to begin with 
So once that happens, we want to see, is there three consecutive um, highs on this one? On a, on a downtrend, we look for highs. You see this is the highest tip right here. This is the next highest tip. It's a little bit lower. This is the next highest tip. It's even further lower. We have three now. One, two, three. Once it touches, you want to keep your uh, line at the tip of the one that touches the MA. We want to wait for that break. So the next candle opens up. Did it break? No. But have we closed outside the MA also? No. So we want to move this line down to the next candle to get an even more precise entry. Now we have another candle that has touched the MA but has not closed on the other side. So at the break of this line, we are going to enter long. Okay, we enter long on this particular line right there. And our stops can be on the other side of the MA or the tips, like most people usually do it. And you can go for a one is to one ratio or obviously any other exit strategies that you like. The strategy is really, really pretty good um, in terms of filtering out bad trades using these MAs. And you guys can get even better if you add additional pairs to it. So before we continue into the additional pairs, I just want to make sure everybody is on track right now based on what you guys are seeing. Do you, does everyone understand um, how the strategy works? I, I know many of you guys are previous members of the strategy. Okay, so um, Jitesh is asking, so is it okay to enter on moving data? No. Uh, yes, actually, yes, you will be entering on moving data on this one, but you guys are using a closed candle to determine where you're going to enter. Okay? So you guys will already be placing your orders, your uh, entry orders, before the, the next candle even opens, or when the next candle opens. Okay? Steve, so far so good. Andrew, you want a quick summary? Okay, we'll do a quick summary. And um, Karen saying, so... Naveen, we would enter on the break of the yellow line in the trade you were just talking about. Yes, at the moment the yellow line is broken, you would be going in a long. Okay. Um, okay, so let's go through a quick summary. We'll go through uh, another one or two examples, and then we'll get into a little bit more advanced methods on how we can uh, maximize profits and uh, take it from there. Now, we're going to go through a good trade, and we're going to go through a false trade. Okay, and so you guys can know what is the difference. Here is a good trade we're looking at. We see the market is in a downtrend. The market starts to retrace, starting from here. It starts to go up towards the MA. Which one touches the MA first? None of this touches, right? This one doesn't touch, this one doesn't touch, this one doesn't touch. Bam, we have this last green candle that's touched. Okay, first thing you need to ask yourself, has it crossed and closed on the other side of the market? No, okay, which is a good thing. Okay, do we have three consecutive uh, towers to reach this area? You can see that uh, there was a lowest here, uh, and then a higher low, a higher low, and then a higher low. We have at least three now, okay? Another check, okay? And is the MAs congested? See, the MAs here are a little bit opened up. You can see through them practically, but can you do that over here? No. It's too congested. You can't see through each MA. Over here, you can. So, all things criteria match. Once we have our first touch, we keep our line at the lowest point of that candle that touched the MAs. Okay? We This candle now closes. We have our entries to sell at this yellow line. The next candle closes. Has it touched? No. Has it crossed to the other side yet? No. Are we still creating additional towers? Yes. So we move our yellow line to the lowest point of the next one. So you're moving with the market if you catch my drift. Okay. Let's uh, put this line here. Okay. And suddenly the next candle opens. You can keep your uh, stops at the tip of your candle that touched the market first or the highest point. Or you guys can use the, the particular candle that broke through. You can keep your stops there for an ag aggressive stop. And you are, you're going to be entering short on this particular trade. You're going with the trend. Okay. You enter short at this uh, yellow line down here. And you're going for a 1 is to 1 ratio or more. So majority of the times you will book profits on this particular case. Okay. Okay. Now. 
we've gone through a good example. Now we're going to go through a uh, example that would not work. Um, Karen's saying, so we could put it in a pending order. Yes, as soon as the candle closes, put it in a pending order. Uh, Steve, so are you saying do not take the trade if the MA is congested? Yes, do not take it if it's congested. Um, if you do, are taking it when it's congested, it's considered an aggressive trade. When it's congested, you're most likely in a sideways market. So this will help you filter the sideways market momentum. Okay, so do not trade in a congested MA. Okay, let's continue here. Okay, now... Here is an example of a trade that did not work. Okay, now when I say did not work, it does not necessarily mean a loss. Okay, let's take a look. We have a our MAs over here. You can see they're not congested. We can look through them. They're nice and beautiful. And we have our candles. We see starting to retrace. Okay, we have one, we have two, and actually we starting to have a touch now. One, two, three, right here. So we put our entries right here and we want to sell at the break of this. Okay? Has the candle crossed outside to the other side of the MAs? No. Have we have at least three towers? Yes, we have a low, higher low, higher low. We got three now. Okay? That's also a yes. Okay, is the MAs not congested? Yes, it's clear. So we have our entry placed. Now, next candle, same situation. Everything is a yes. We trail it. Still, it did not cross through, it did not break. Now we have another candle. Now the situation has turned. We have closed onto the other side. Okay, the candle has now closed onto the other side of the MA. Now the trade is void. You end up not entering this trade whatsoever, nor do you take a hit because you know now the trade is voided because the candle opened on the other side. Now, Looking at this, does this, is this system perfect? No, it's not. You will have some losses, of course. Nothing is perfect. But just to be on the safe side, if you watch for the congestions and if you keep these rules in mind, it will help you filter out bad trades. Okay. Now we have questions. Um, let's take a look at this. Does the colors matter? No, the colors do not matter. Treat the MAs as one. Whether it's green or blue does not matter. All the Treat the MAs as one. Okay, and uh, let's pull up the questions. Valdemar, I think you had a question. I see your hand up. Um, where is my question box? There we go. Okay, Ned, that's a good idea. I mean to show us bad examples so we know what to avoid. Yes, Ned, uh, I, I will show you more bad examples as uh, we scroll through the charts. Right now, I'm just showing you guys one single pair. Okay. Um, can we take hammers or shooting stars into consideration? Yes, Wasim, uh, you guys can take any formations on or around these MAs. Um, obviously, if you have hammers around these MAs, even it's perfect. For example, the trade that we just uh, looked at earlier, uh, which was, which one did we look at? This one right here. Nice hammer formation, exhaustion candle or a pin bar, whatever you like to call it, gives you a heads up that, okay, market is going long no matter what, you know, it's just a sure shot. So, there are several examples like that. So, yes, you guys can take it into consideration. Now, let's let's continue on here. Okay, Andrew, what are the MAs? Uh, uh, exponential or simple? Honestly, Andrew, I do not know. I, you might want to check with some of the people on uh, our website to ask them in the chat room, and maybe they might be able to open it up and find out the MA settings for you. But uh, the MAs are pretty, the indicator is pretty much ready on uh, on the site. You just need to download it and put it onto your screen. I've not really opened it up to uh, look into it uh, in detail. So let's let's continue here. Now, let's move further back. Let's get you one more example. I'm going to ask you guys if this is correct or not correct, and you guys will let me know. Okay. Now this particular one. Okay. The, mar the candle has touched the MA. Do we have a trade here? Are we going to go along at the break of this? Yes or no? And why? If you guys can let me know. And then we will go over it. We're going to give you guys 60 seconds to answer this question. Okay, Sonia says no. Okay, correct. Valdemar says also no because there's two towers only. Very good. 
Okay, no, there are no three three towers. Um, Bead, uh, actually, it's a no. Uh, we'll go through it. Why? Andrew, no. Wasim, no. Tommy, no. Karen, uh, okay, we'll go through it. Okay. Okay, so most of you guys got this right. A um, few people, just qu some questions, not a problem. Okay, let's write this down. There's three criteria we need to look at, and only three criteria. Yeah? Let's write this down and let me increase my font size. Okay, one, we need to check for is it congested? The MAs. Next thing we need to check do we have three highs? three higher lows or do we have three lower highs okay it can be a little confusing here but I'll explain that to you and finally um, do we have did the candle close on the other side okay these are the, these are the things you want to look at first if any of these things are incorrect trade is voided okay so let's go through this is the MAs congested on this no so that's a good sign that's a good thing you know we'll call this a plus do we have three higher lows or three lower highs let's count we have one and then we have two the one previously is not in a trend so that makes it invalid in a downtrend you're gonna have three uh, lower highs okay this is for a downtrend and this will be for an uptrend okay don't worry you don't need to write this down I will have this video recorded it will be up on YouTube and uh, the websites everywhere you can think of it will be there so um, yes this is an uptrend this is a downtrend and did the candle close on the other side no so from all these criteria, one of them was incorrect so this all in all would be an invalid trade now moving forward let's take a look let me minimize this. I'm going to ask you guys one more question. Also, 60 seconds to answer. Is this a good trade? And trade number two, is this a good trade? Trade number one, let me know what you guys think. And also trade number two, let me know what you guys think. Okay, Valdemir, aggressive trade. Good, good. Um, bead, Klukes. Steve, uh, there are only two candles in a row. Okay, Sonia, good. Totally yes. Number two is also yes. Trade one and two are good. Waldemar says yes and yes. Wasim says trade two is good. Bead says no and yes. Uh, Steve says trade two is good. Floyd says trade two is good. Andrew says three N. Okay, now to answer this question, Trade two is obviously good. That is correct. Okay, trade one. Okay, let's take a look here. Trade three is correct. Let's go through trade three first and we'll go through trade two afterwards because trade two can be a little bit tricky. So we'll go through trade two a little, a, a, in a second. Uh, trade one in a second. Let's take a look at this one first. Let's get rid of this. Okay, where do we have our first touch? We're going down. And we have our first touch here. Are we congested? Let's go through these questions. Are we congested? No. So that's a good sign. We're in a downtrend. So downtrend means this one. Do we have three lower highs? Let's take a look. On its way down to here before it touched, we have one high here. A lower high. Another lower high. Another lower high. Okay. Now, we placed our entries at the tip of this. On the high side we want to break break above this is a long so this candle closes and the next candle is running now this candle closes still we haven't had our entry yet what does that mean we go through all the criteria again we're still touching the MA we haven't crossed outside we're still having more and more consecutive towers so we move our entry even tighter now we're down with here our stops are now placed at the tip of our uh, recent touch and you can see at the break of the next candle we are now long we are going long for this trade and the trade did go long in our favor if you had a one is to one ratio there's nothing stopping you okay so in this particular trade yes we went through now let's take a look at the first example 
we had our first touch over here. Do we have three consecutive uh, lower highs? Okay, we have one. And the second and third one, a lot of you guys said they are the same height. Here's the thing. When in doubt, leave it alone. Okay? This trade was perfect, but when in doubt, forget perfection. Leave it alone. Do not trade. It's not worth risking your money over it. Okay? Only trade when you are certain. And don't think that if you miss this trade, you're going to miss a chance of a lifetime. No, it's not. that's not the case. There's so many pairs that you can trade this with, and there's so many opportunities every single day. So never stress on, am I going to miss it? Am I going to miss it? Am I going to miss it? You will not miss it. Okay? So again, when in doubt, leave it alone. Okay, so Steve, trade one is good. Okay, Andrew, Colin, uh, Jitesh, both trades are good. Okay, now Karen's understanding. Okay, one and two is good. Good. What is the best time frame for this? I personally prefer one hour. It gives me enough time to fool around and do whatever I want and come back and look at it only once an hour. But for those of you who are really aggressive and like to really stay on the market, 15 minutes is also good. A little bit choppy. Just watch the news. Stay away from the news. Otherwise, if you want to ask me my personal preference, stick to one hour. Okay? Karen, uh, there is always another trade. Yes, there is always another trade. Would rather be out of a trade wishing I was in than in a trade wishing I was out. Well said, well said. Ned, that's good advice. When in doubt, leave it. Yes. Um, or oh, Seam, are there any ideal pairs for this strategy? Ideal pairs for this strategy is all the pairs that have small spread. Okay, that makes it Euro Yen, Euro USD, sometimes Pound Dollar. Um, I believe uh, those would be the tightest spreads. Okay, doesn't don't worry about the spreads. I'm going to teach you guys a technique on uh, how you guys can take this into your favor, where uh, you guys can maximize your profit. And many of you guys from my social network who trade with me every day in the chat room, you guys already know what I'm probably going to be bringing up here in terms of correlation. All right, so we've got 27 minutes to this webinar. Let's let's uh, use time wisely and let's continue. Um, Tony says, do you have an alert or a manual EA for the setup? Ah, that's a good point. Um, we don't have any alerts for this, but there is an EA out there. Uh, in fact, maybe three EAs out there. I remember um, in 2010 and 2011, people emailing me saying that uh, they wanted my permission to release an EA for this. So I know there are EAs out there for this, uh, maybe on Forex Factory or ForexTSD.com, uh, one of these two websites. Uh, just need to look for it. And if you do find it, please post it onto our uh, onto our forums as well and share it with us. We we love to uh, put show it on the next webinar and discuss it. Um, in fact, uh, one of our organizers in this room, Roy, who's also a member of our network, saying I will be making one. So he's a programmer. He's going to be making one. So if you guys want, you guys can talk to him on our social network. He's a pretty nice guy. He's very friendly. So he's he's making one. Okay, so uh, for those of you who are new, who do not know much about Forex, an EA is basically a robot that uh, trades on your behalf for you. It's like automatic trading. It looks at the criteria that you give it and it trades for you. So that's pretty much an EA. So imagine doing all this hands-free. Okay? Although it is more fun watching it and doing it yourself. It's always fun. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Okay? Good trade or bad trade? Let me know. Uh, on naked charts, can we guess or track the entry of the strategy? No, um, you will not be able to. You need the MAs on this. How do you take a setup take profit? Okay, uh, Valdemar will we'll, once we discuss this particular trade, we're gonna go into take profits and uh, stops. Cursor is stuck. Okay, let's reload the screen. I just turned it off. Let's give it a few seconds. I will turn it back on. Um, for those of you who are late, um, that's okay. I'm always late myself, so don't feel bad. Uh, I am recording this webinar, so it will be up on YouTube. 
in case you do miss the uh, beginning part of this. But we're going to start getting into more advanced things. So we're going to give it uh, another few more minutes uh, while we discuss uh, a couple more entries. And, and then we are going to go into the advanced uh, take profit methods where we can maximize profits and take uh, 50 to 100 pips at a time rather than 5 to 10 pips. Okay, screen is up again. Everybody says yes, and my mouse is moving. Okay, Jared, is this strategy more profitable than your 10 pips a day strategy? Yes, it is more profitable. Um, this is my second favorite strategy after my price action strategy. Uh, those of you who are members of my premium website, forexwatchers.com, um, we use you know price action analysis. But if I were to give that up, uh, then this would be the strategy I would be trading. Okay, so my pro trading strategy is obviously my number one strategy, but uh, this would be my second best. Okay, let's continue here. So yes, uh, let's take a look at this one, this particular arrow. Is this a good trade? Okay, yes, yes, yes. If a candle goes bead if the candle goes past the arrow is that any part of the candle no just the close like these little long tails that you see they can go as far as they want that's not a problem but this this thing that's filled the the chunk red or the chunk of green that is called the body the body should not be on the outside the tails can go as far as they want okay now let me know if that makes sense bead Karen says yes, Sonia says good, Jitesh says yes, good trade, very good, Andrew, yes, 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 yes. Okay, good job, good job. Okay, this is a good trade. Okay, Mark, it, it retraced, we can see the MAs clearly, we can see through them, it is not congested. We had uh, consecutive uh, lower highs, at one, two, three, four, even five, and this would be our entry, would end up being here. Okay we would enter at the break of, of this tip and we, sh we shot up, okay? Okay, not go past it, it just has to hit. Um, bead, it does, uh, doesn't have to go past it, it just has to hit. Yes, as long as it touches the MA, okay? It, it can go past it, but it should not close on the other side. For example, the, the body should not be on the other end. The tails can come out, no problem. Okay, yes, good trade. Karen's have three three towers touch the MAs. Uh, you don't need three towers to touch them. Even if you have just one touching the MA, that's fine. Okay, and Abhijit, no, as in uh, you do not uh, understand or uh, you do not agree that this is a good trade. Okay, um, just write down your question. I'll come back to that. Now, Let's take a look here. Now, people ask me, uh, I think Valdemar, you asked me, is uh, take profits. You entered here, right? This is where you went long. For example, let's say you're trading one standard lot. You want to go long here. And you have your stops at the previous tip, which is right here. How many pips far away is that? Uh, let's take it accuracy. We'll talk dollar amount so it's a little bit easier to understand. 43 pips away. That means $430 away if you're trading one standard lot. If you trade a 1 is to 1 ratio, you can go up for 43 pips, which means $430, which would have been achieved in within the hour, maybe 15 to 45 minutes. Okay? So my interns usually trade this uh, on a 1 is to 1 ratio. Okay, I think uh, if uh, we Google it really quick. And don't the I think it's urban tower scalping strategy dot wordpress dot com. It's it's a big mess. Um, urban tower scalping strategy. Okay. Yes. If you just Google it, it it should be the first result. You can see he's been uh, documenting every trade that he takes uh, for the longest time. Um, he's no longer on there on WordPress anymore. He is now on our social network, and. Uh, He's on a leave right now, so once he comes back, he'll be documenting again. He's on a vacation. So, anyways, let's continue here. Um, where did we go? Uh, yes, charts. Okay, so one is to one ratio, Waldemar, to answer your question. 
Okay, your cursor is not moving again. Oh no. Okay, let me stop and restart it. Once we're done with this, we're gonna go to today's date and see if there was any particular trades today that has happened or is going to happen right now as we speak. And, uh, and then we'll go into some advanced methods, which uh, has never been shared before on YouTube for this strategy. Okay, it's working now. Okay, great. What about pivot points? Should we look at it? Uh, you can. If you want to go for more precise exits, always use pivot points. Pivot points are the best thing ever. Okay? And when, if you do not know how to use pivot points properly, YouTube Pro Trading Strategy by Urban Forex. You guys will know how to use the pivot points very accurately because what they teach you on the internet is useless. It's crap. So I, 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 th I think I can say crap on the internet. That's fine. Okay. But yeah, um, just uh, you can YouTube uh, Pro Trading Strategy by Urban Forex and you guys will see how to use pivot points very accurately. They're very good for exiting trades. Okay, so that will help you maximize trades. Now, screens up. Everyone can see the screens now. Is it good? Just a white screen. I have a blank screen. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay. One more time. Let's let's do this again. Turn it off. On. on. Okay, and how many of you guys, while the screen is loading, how many of you guys are familiar with my pro trading strategy? Um, have you guys seen the, have you guys attended the webinars? Have you guys seen the videos? Are you guys uh, following up with it? Karen, uh, Naveen, try Omnivia for your webinars. They're not that bad. Okay, uh, I will look into them. Uh, Omnovia, yeah. I will look into them. We'll give them a shot. Yes, yes, partly, yes, B, yes, very good. Okay. So we, we, um, we will be holding weekly webinars for pro trading strategies because I do see there's a lot of people still um, behind on, in our chat rooms. We trade the strategy every day live uh, in our chat rooms, in our network, and uh, I do see a lot of questions. So I think I'm going to start holding weekly webinars for uh, the pro trading strategy. Um, Floyd, you have such a positive, cool attitude. <laughs> Thank you, Floyd. Uh, you, we have to keep it that way, right? Again, uh, analysts, we have a bad reputation for uh, confusing people, but uh, let's let's change the things around. Okay, uh, Karen, I watched the video, but not uh, having a lot of success with it. I am trying to get the money together to become part of your premium group eventually. Uh, yeah, take your time. There's no rush. The premium group is only there to pay for Urban Forex, to keep it alive. So if you guys are a part of the premium member, uh, premium group on forexwatchers.com, you guys are obviously doing a lot of pips especially for this month so um, anyways leaving that aside let's continue here screen is still blank for you theory um, everybody else is okay bead back screens up okay theory just uh, see if it comes up otherwise try re-logging in uh, what is the approximate win to loss ratio for urban towers a win to loss uh, I would say you should have approximately from 10 trades, you should have 7 to 8 winners. And the losers that you have should be small, shouldn't be too big because your, your stops would, you, would be usually tight. Okay, screens up. Okay, okay, everybody has a yes. Let, is, let us continue here. Okay, now we went, we discussed that this is our entry area for this particular trade. Let me put an arrow on it. This was our stop, which was the lowest tip. And you can see our stop was how many pips away? 43 pips away. So that means if we use a 1 is to 1 ratio, we can go for a 43 pips of take profit. So on a standard lot, that would mean $430, which would be achieved in a matter of an hour on this particular trade. Sometimes it takes a couple of hours to uh, reach that level. Okay. Now... Uh, uh, Ula Mara, okay, thank you, thank you, Ned, Abhijit, okay, that's a good compliment right there, okay, okay, all right, um, now looking at this, now if we go up 43 pips, now, let me put the lines on here. Now, how many candles did we have to look at to take this trade? We took the entry candle. We took one, two, three, four candles previously to determine how many towers we have. We took four candles, right? 
So if you enter a trade, we looked at four candles in the past, which means four hours worth of data. Can we keep the trade running for the rest of the day? Okay. The answer is no. If the trade is not going in your favor, for example, it did not t touch your take profit, but you are in profit, people choose to hold. If the trade is just minus five pips, but it did not touch your stop, people choose to hold. How long do you hold? Okay. Do not hold very, very long. It is very dangerous. Only hold as much as far as your analysis goes back. We've looked at four candles in the past. You can hold your trade only for four candles in the future. Okay, maximum five. But past that, you are gambling. You're no longer in the analysis zone. It becomes a gamble. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Okay. Okay, how tight do the lines have to be to the MA before the trade is no good? The moment, um, um, wait, Steve, can you repeat that again? How tight do the lines have to be in the MA before? Oh, okay, okay, you're talking about the congestion. Okay, let's take a look at, at a congested area. Okay, can you actually look through all of these MAs? Can you look in between all of them and, and see black space? You can see them, right? Now, in this particular area right here, Okay, let me put an arrow there. You cannot see them through. You can see the first two MAs are touched together. Okay, it's, that's the congested area. It's too tight. You can't look through them. Same, same case goes here. It's too tight. Okay, you need them open like this. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Okay, great. Now, let's get into some advanced methods. This is where the fun begins. Let's take a look at today first and see if we have any potentials. Today on EURUSD, any trades, yes or no? I'm going to ask you guys. Okay, let's move them out here. Let's show you my screen. Any trades, yes or no, for today on EURUSD? No, Karen. Very good. Pound. Any trades? No, Mihale. Very good. Okay, US dollar CAD. Any trades today? Andrew says yes. Karen, no. Ned, no. Mihale, no. Okay. Now, the reason why you probably said yes, Andrew, is right here. You see that touch right there? Three consecutive and the market goes up. Try not to look at the market going up. It, it, you know, we, we at that very moment when this trade actually came to uh, existence, we didn't see the market. So as of right now, all you need to do is look at the MAs. It's too congested. But once we look... In the future, yeah, obviously we know that it's a, it's a nice trade. It went in our favor, but um, try to look at it as realistic as possible. Okay, so there's it's it's no trade because the trades are congested. Again, um, these rules are very important. And once you guys have this on uh, YouTube, or if you guys want to take a screenshot or write this down, you guys are welcome to do that. So let's uh, move on. Let's take a look at U.S. dollar, Swiss franc. Any trades today? No. Okay, good. Aussie dollar, any trades? Yes, yes, no. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. Those of you who guys said yes, very, very good. Let's take a look at this. We have a very beautiful trade on Aussie dollar that happened today. And Perry says yes also. Even our organizer is excited now okay great let's take a look at this now um, right here is where we have our first touch okay oh sorry bead <laughs> bead says great country yes okay well so we'll, we'll work on the great countries uh, currency pair right now now let's take a look at Aussie dollar right here okay we have our first touch right here 
What things do we need to check? Is it congested? No, we can see through clearly. Check. Do we have our towers? And we're in the uptrend, so we're going to look for higher lows. We have one, we have two, we have three. Check. Okay. Did we close outside of the MA onto this side? No. Check. All criteria is match. We place our entry right here. The next candle opens. We place our stop right there. Now. How many pips away is our stop? 24 pips away. 24 pips in our favor would mean approximately $240. Or let's just say we're a small trader. We have, we're trading with one mini lot, okay? 24 pips would mean how many dollars in a mini lot? $24, okay? The average person in this room cannot survive on $24 a day. That's Starbucks money. You know, there's, there's no way. $24 a day would be okay for me, actually. I'm in China. But for a lot of you guys in Europe and the U and in the States, it's it's not possible. So, what what happens when it's when you're trading a small amount like one mini lot and you get twenty four dollars? You made profit, but it's not enough. What happens then? Your psychology kicks in and you want more, and that more can ruin things. Okay. Now there is a way to control that by correlation. When you do correlation, I'm gonna tell, teach you guys how to maximize profit and and book so much profit that this same trade will get you $200, $300 or more and at the same time you will be satisfied. Okay, now we'll go through that. Now, Karen, would the MAs not have been too congested? No, um, because I'm maybe from your screen you're not able to uh, see, it's not as clear, but you can easily see through all the MAs. There's enough black space between each MA. None of them are touching together. Okay, Karen, I am in Aussie land. Okay, great, great, great. That's great. It's, it's a, I really want to visit there one day, so we'll see how it goes. And maybe I make a trip out there. And New Zealand, because we have another member there and uh, nearby and named Brian. Okay, B, the three towers uh, congested only when you zoom out. Um, okay, we'll, we'll take a look at that. And uh, Abhijit, now I understand the strategy. Okay, very good. Uh, Karen, nope, I would, uh, I would starve and the bank would only take my house. <laughs> okay, yeah, so $24 is not worth it. Now, let, let's go through, uh, let, let, let's go through our correlation methods. Now, guys, write this down, okay? I'm gonna put this up for you. Euro USD, pound, dollar, okay? Australian dollar, US dollar, New Zealand dollar, US dollar, Euro yen, Sometimes even gold. Okay. The pairs above this line work together. The pairs below this line work opposite. So, Aussie dollar we're going to sell. That means we, we can sell all of this. Okay, now you remember Andrew when uh, we, uh, we looked at uh, US dollar CAD at that very same time and you said that there was a trade but we said no there's not a trade because of congestion. Tell you what, in this particular case now, now that we're looking at correlation, this is a win. Why? Because Aussie dollar we have a cell. What does that mean? Aussie dollar is a cell means opposite on these two pairs, which would mean buy on these two pairs. Now we have a touch on uh, US dollar CAD. We have a touch on Aussie dollar. Let's take a look further down. New Zealand dollar. No touch, but the market did go in the same direction. Euro yen. Okay. Where? What time was this? put this all together we have a sell at four o'clock euro yen let's take a look at four o'clock on my screen okay we have a small sell not too much okay so profit there as well gold four o'clock let's take a look four o'clock sharp drop as well 
So let's say the average one, let's let's take a look at gold. Okay? 59 pips on gold. Euro yen. How many pips on Euro yen uh, drop on average? 14. Okay, New Zealand dollar dropped a big chunk itself, more than 40, 50 pips. So let's say Aussie dollar was your only pair that gave you a perfect formation. You're looking at Aussie dollar only and you do one is to one ratio. The moment Aussie dollar closes, all of these pairs you must close. Always follow the perfect one. But by the time you close all of these pairs, you are no longer standing at 24 pips, but you are rather standing at probably 200. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Okay, great, great. So, that's the main thing right now is is it's not that you want to increase lot size for this but you want to increase pips because when you have your analysis correct increasing pips is a piece of cake but if you increase your lot size you're trading on one pair you're increasing risk at the same time okay so be very careful with that okay now we are approaching 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which means the close of the webinar. Should we do one more example before we close it? And should we do it with correlation? Okay. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Okay, we're going to do one more example, and this time I'm going to have you guys look at this, okay? I'm going to go back a few days. Let's take any random pair. Uh, okay, give me a random pair, guys. Which pair you guys want to look at? I'm not going to pick and choose. I'm going to let you guys pick. Okay. Karen says pound dollar. Okay. We'll use pound dollar. Okay. Somebody give me a random date in March, for example. Okay. Andrew says the 12th. March 12th, pound dollar. Let's take a look. Okay. Let's go to March 12th. March 12 is here. Any trades on March 12 for pound? No. Okay, beat. Very good. Let's take a look at Euro USD on March 12. Any trades on Euro USD March 12? Andrew says no. Good. US dollar CAD, March 12th. Take a look. Any trades here? Okay, Mihaly says no. Swiss franc, March 12. Any trades there? Let's take a look. No. Aussie dollar, March 12. Any trades there? there. New Zealand dollar, March 12. Let's take a look at that. Nothing here. Euro yen, March 12. Any trades here? Uh, Karen says March 12 was a Monday that would make much of a difference to difference to opportunities. Naveen trying doing this on a Monday. No, nope, that's not the case, Karen. There's always a trade. There's always always a trade. 
Ned, no, uh, Bead. This is the second method I have seen you talking about. It seems based on similar principles. There seems to be a rational behind what you're doing this. Is this right? Yes. I always uh, try to bring out the point of seeing the market as a whole rather than trading one pair at a time, adding a million indicators on it, trying to find the golden trail. It's not going to work. We, I, I try to train everyone to look at it, look at the market as a whole, to understand what is going on in the market. Turn off the TV, turn off the news. You don't need to watch that. It's really useless. But coming back to Euro Yen, is there a trade on the 12th? Valdemar says yes. Yes, yes. Okay, there's a trade on Euro Yen on the 12th. Let's see. Do we have a trade now? Let's take a look. I see a pair right here okay we are outside our zone now we have now touched it do we is it congested no do we have three towers we have a low higher low higher low that makes it three check 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 have we closed outside onto the other side no keep our entries at the tip of this our stop over here at the tip of that what is our 17 pips is our risk and we've touched 17 pips just on target one is to one ratio okay 17 is to 17 now it did even hit it further down three hours later it did also hit even further up to 20 22 pips without hitting our stop so you're gonna get the profit regardless now the only thing is 17 pips hundred and seventy dollars or seventeen dollars not much let's take a look at the timings let's do the correlation for this at 7 p.m. we short euro yen okay sell at 7 Okay, 700 hours. So if we sell on uh, Euro Yen, does that mean we sell on US dollar Swiss franc and US dollar CAD? No, we buy. Good, good. Okay, just checking if you guys are sleeping or paying attention. Good, good. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look. We're going to sell everything at 7. Okay, Euro USD, 12 o'clock. Uh, 7 o'clock on the 12th. Seven, sell. Did the candle go down? Yes. Pound, same day at seven. Okay. A short move only, possibly a loss because of spread. No problem. Continue. CAD, seven. We're going to go long at seven on CAD. Okay. Spread, lost, right there. Swiss franc. 7, gonna go long, 7, a decent rise, Aussie dollar, 7, we're gonna sell, a decent drop, New Zealand dollar, 7, we're gonna sell, decent drop, Euro Yen, we already know, Gold, 7 on uh, the 12th. Let's go back to the 12th. At 7, we sell. Minor drop. So, putting this all together, would you have made 300 pips off of this one? No. But would you have made more than 17 pips? Yeah? So, when you have your analysis right, you're doing everything you have to do, you put everything together, you put in correlation, you add on profit, do not ever doubt yourself, okay? That's one major thing. Once you enter a trade, stick to it, complete it till the end. Even if it gives you a loss, doesn't matter. Stick with it, and then the next trade, continue the same method which you use on that losing trade. Do not modify any methods, do not jump a strategy, do not change uh, the way you think whatsoever. 
Okay? All strategies work to a certain extent as long as there's not so much indicators on the screen. If it's a price action based strategy, all strategies work. Add correlation to it, add a winning probability to it, you will not lose. Okay? It is just the psychology that's involved with it that makes a person lose. Okay? Where do we put the stop loss on the other pairs, not on the ones we did? There's no need to put a stop loss on any other pairs. Treat the whole trade as one. You put the stop loss and take profit only on the pair that's perfect. For in this case, Euro Yen. Once Euro Yen touches its stop or take profit, exit everything. Okay? Treat the trade as one. Okay? Okay, Karen, same question for you. Um, no, just uh, I just answered that question. I so uh, I think I answered your question too. Uh, Bead, what about not risking more than 2% of the bank? That's still the case. Do not risk more than 2%. That is what is taught to us in the books. Um, you guys can follow that, but 2% really not much people follow. Okay, I'm not saying that uh, I don't follow it. I do follow it, but uh, not many people follow it because of the mentality. Some people have a $2,000 account, and when they're trading a 2% risk, they end up, you know, just uh, increasing lot size because it's the amount that you get on a return is just not enough comparing to what you are used to on a day-to-day -day basis. If you're spending $100 a day by going out, you know, whether you're eating McDonald's or you're eating at Olive Garden or you're out uh, partying, if you're not making at least that much, you're not going to be happy with trading because when people start trading Forex, they come in with an expectation to replace their job or to replace some sort of pocket money on a day-to-day -day basis which is the reason why many people fail they don't treat it like an investment so this will help you do that once you add in correlation this will help you increase profits at least and keep your mind satisfied with the same analysis there's no extra analysis there's no sitting on your screen for another 20 hours a day okay you find one trade you add correlation and you're good to go okay uh, use correlation on one hour only or 15 minutes or 30 minutes. You guys can use correlation on any amount of time frame you want, but a one hour time frame is ideal because every day there is a new uh, fundamental watches uh, in terms of the market. Every day there is new paperwork, but there is not new paperwork every 15 minutes or 30 minutes. The one hour chart will filter the news. So one hour chart is ideal. Four hour charts is not worth it because there's only what? eight of those in a day so it's not worth it to do the four-hour charts okay Jared how did you decide your take profit uh, one is to one ratio if your stop is 17 pips away your take profit 17 pips away the moment any of those touch exit everything okay bead yes build slowly build skills yes Karen, thank you so much. It's simple strategy, and I understand. You're very welcome. I'm glad you understood that. Can we trade crosses? Um, yes, you guys can trade crosses as long as the, the spreads are not too big. Uh, what are the exit rules? The exit rules, obviously, once uh, uh, you exit one, the perfect trade, you exit everything else. Jared, thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, so time is up now. We are past by 11 minutes. I have to shut down this webinar. I thank you all for attending and uh, we will have this video up on YouTube uh, shortly. And for those of you who are not a member of our social network, please do join our network. It is urbanforex.ning.com. I am there every day. We have a chat room running and I actually trade with all the members every day. We try to average anywhere between 100 to 200 pips a day. So look forward to seeing you guys in the chat room as well. Thanks a lot for attending. Take care, guys. Um, Wasim, you asked me, is there any ideal time for the strategy? No, there is no ideal time. You can actually trade this at any hours. So that's fine. Uh, you're very welcome, Wasim. Take care.